Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. In today's exciting episode, I talk about my September sewing plans. There's a lot of them. It's spring where I am, so I'm going to Combery. All my tweeds and my fashion fabrics, everything. Plus, there's a few things inspired by the movie You've Got Mail that I'm going to get to. Her favourite, um, the main character, her favourite flowers are daisies. So I'm going to make a summer jacket out of that daisy fabric. And yeah, loads of other things. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Ugh, I really am all over the shop at the moment. I'm getting everything out to like dividing, <laughs> plonking things in different areas to work out which videos are going to be which. So maybe we'll start with you've got mail. So um, there's a couple of things in this. I'm still deciding whether or not to watch the movie because I'm just in such mood at the moment. Anyway, I love this 91st Street garden in the background here, the community garden, and I want to make a floral jacket based on that. The flowers in that are whites, blues and purples, and I do have a blue and purple bag of flowers that I could turn into a jacket or I also have this absolutely gorgeous, oopsie, I accidentally deleted the footage I had. I've got this massive bag of white flowers, white and dark green, and there's also some variegated green, white or uh, two-tone leaves in there. And it's magnificent. And I laid them all out <laughs> and took this glorious bit of footage but I've accidentally deleted well you've I used it a couple of times in a different few vi different videos over the course of this year and um, yeah I'm thinking about making them up into a jacket with a green base jacket and then put all the dark green leaves and then the white flowers over the top it's going to be absolutely beautiful but um or also there's this wine jacket here that I have to remake I made it on a scoop neck jacket and the big flowers are just like in the bust area and it's just, it's all wrong. I wanted something that people won't lean down and think it's really funny to smell the flowers at my bust level. I just don't want that. So I have to take that one all apart and redo it. So maybe I'll do that. But it's more fun starting from scratch and I kind of want to do, do the white one. Anyway, so there is that. But also I was reading the script because of course I was. And there's this bit where she does like she works in a bookshop she owns and works there and she does this reading where she reads a book I, I don't know why they chose boy but um it's actually the scene that's on the cover of that book of all the Roald Dahl novels I think I would probably choose which is I think would be probably a little bit too scary but um great costumes in that one Matilda, oh my God, I saw the movie recently and I just bawled my eyes out. They are so mean to her. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, I loved that when I was a kid. I just loved that so much. It's fabulous. And then um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, who doesn't like candy? Come on. Everything in that is delicious. Well, not everything, but you know. And um, James and the Giant Peach. Like... Who wouldn't want to live in a huge bit of fruit? That would be absolutely delicious. I'm getting totally distracted. But anyway, so then I decided that I would like make some layer cake dresses. Like what would you wear? The question was, what would you wear if you were going to do story time? And I would wear layer cake, like my wardrobe. I would wear layer cake dresses and brightly coloured jackets. Well, any jacket really, but with loads of intricate beading. So basically just my usual, really. What can I say? When I do go to parties, kids absolutely adore me. Or even when I go down the street. Just, I'm just, I basically wear dress ups every day. And yeah, and stuff that I would have adored to wear when I was a kid. Anyway, after the story time, they sort of looking around the shop and Joe and Kathleen get to talking. He says, he just palms off the two kids that he's looking after uh, and says, read these books. And then um, Kathleen says, the world is not driven by, because uh, she doesn't know that he's Joe Fox. And so they get into this conversation about the importance of children's books. And she says, the world is not driven by discounts. Believe me, I've been in business forever. I started helping my mother here after school when I was six years old. I used to watch her and it isn't 
that she was selling books. It was that she was helping people become whoever they were going to turn out to be. When you read a book as a child, it becomes part of your identity in a way that no other reading in your life does. I guess I've gotten away, carried away. And Joe goes, you have. You've made me feel. And he almost tells her the truth. He almost tells her that he's Joe Fox, but he so spineless, he chickens out and he looks at the photo behind her and he goes, enchanting. Your mother was enchanting. And Kathleen goes, she was. Wait, how did you know that? And of course, pathological liar that he is, he goes, oh, lucky guess. Instead of saying that his father, no, his grandfather wanted to date her mum. Oh, he's such a he any chance to tell the truth and he lies. He's the worst. Yeah. So anyway, I was thinking that maybe I, my favourite book as a child was Witch Witch. It's a British book, and um, if you know the billionaire who became a the the woman who became a billionaire by writing those wizard books, um, yeah, she grew up reading this book, and um, this one the protagonist is female. And if you switch it out and you change it to the boy who's also in the book, but he's not like the main character, he's just one of the main characters. Um, Yeah. Anyway, so I will be doing some things based on what Kathleen Kelly, like the Meg Ryan character is wearing, but also mainly I'll just be decorating my dinosaur jacket with all these things here and some other really bright, colourful, cheerful ones that I would wear if I was doing story time. But also I have a copy of Witch Witch, so I'm thinking of like um, doing a reading of that because it's just the like I read it, reread it, and I was just like, oh my God, this is exactly who I am. Like um, the the bit from the script that I just read, it becomes part of who you are. Like I have not read that book in decades and I was ranging, reading it and I was like, oh my God, this is so cringe. But um, it's exactly who I am. She's like a Disney princess, but I've never watched any of the Disney. I watched Tangled uh, like in the past few years but before that I'd never watched any of the Disney princess movies and she's definitely of that ilk so anyway this is me just showing you all the tealy um beads that are these are little mirror beads and you're supposed to I've got some um silvery proper mirror ones but those ones are sort of black mirror aqua ones and those sort of wine coloured and aqua beads are solid glass beads that I was going to use on this knitted jacket that I made at the end of last year that I still haven't beaded, but I've decided to do a different type of beading on it. So I, these are just all the beads that I got out. I'm not sure that I will use those teal coloured bows, but I did get them out. And these leaves, they're actually made of glass and they're very delicate. I was thinking the goldish ones and the aqua, actually they would all match if you sort of, yeah, so it's going to be collar and cuff style beading, like in the green Gucci jacket. And then um, it's going to have the dinosaurs, the little dinosaur pendants that I got are going to be dotted around the front, but I think I might do, oh, and I have these aqua, um, they're like Roman coins, but they're aqua. I don't know why I bought them. They were on sale. What can I say? So I might dot them in there as well. So that's not unrelentingly dark bluish teal. So the aqua will sort of brighten it up a bit. So yeah, these are all the ingredients, but I won't use everything. I'll just probably use bits of everything or Yeah, probably not the bows. I think I could use them on something else. So, but yeah, and you can tell by the thread that I've chosen that it's mostly going to be the darker ones. And yeah, see how much of this I can use up. It's incredible the amount of beads you can use in one jacket if you just put your mind to it. Oh, and I remember that I had these beads as well. They're called, they're just hilarious. They're kids' beads, obviously. And they're mermaid pearls. So normally pearls are glass pearls and they're quite expensive and they're very heavy. And they've got this beautiful finish on them that makes glass beads look like pearls. But these are plastic beads and they're just hilarious. So I decided to put them 
it, this is the scene, um, the Snow White jacket. I've never actually seen the Snow White movie, I don't think. But when I was younger, they didn't make women's clothes back last century. Oh my God, I'm so old. They didn't make um, women's clothes in the wide range of sizes that they did. So I often had to shop in the kids section. And I had these underpants seven days of the week and there's seven... Um, dwarfs and it was like sleepy grumpy all those ones but I had to stop wearing them because I was working in this retail store and this guy it was a flora shop and this guy sneezed and I happened to be wearing my sneezy underpants and I was like I, I was so close to going oh my god I've, I was like I have got to stop wearing these underpants and stop telling people that you're wearing them but I didn't but I was just like so almost did and I was like dude stop sharing anyway so um what was I saying oh so this is a snow white jacket and these are all the beads that I pulled and um yeah I really like these little flowers but they're very tiny they're like smaller than your little finger um nail they're really small and but the hearts were too big it was very goldilocks and the three bears the hearts were too big the flowers were too small the other glass ones i didn't have enough of any of them i was originally going to put clear glass beads on this jacket and hmm i kind of think that would have probably look the best but what's done is done but also clear doing clear glass beads is kind of a little bit boring so yeah these are the um I don't know this blue is beautiful but it's a little too grayish so yeah I do love it but I just thought it would be a bit unrelenting so I was like oh I'll mix some colors in there and then there's those mermaid ones oh my god they're so hilarious and oh, I love the lining. It's this Italian silk and I only had the tiniest bit left. But yeah, it's really beautiful. Anyway, so these are also glass, these beads, but they're frosted. It's They're very beautiful, but I just did not have enough. And I was like, can you really mix? Uh, yeah, so I didn't have enough of the mermaid ones. Plus they were a little bit too large and I didn't have enough of the frosted ones. And um, yeah. But so I decided to mix those two plus adding the grayish blue ones in. And then I was like, mm, yeah, but it's a little bit heavy. So I ended up adding some flowers in as well. And um, oh, this was just the frosted one. So I did a little bit and I was like, oh, they're beautiful. But then I like counted and I was like, there is absolutely no way I will have enough. And then, yeah, so I've just done one cuff at this point and that's where I was like, yeah, we're going to need to use the mermaid ones and some flowers in there as well to lighten it up. So the mermaid ones are hollow plastic. The mermaid pearls are hollow plastic, any toy store. <laughs> and um, the other ones are glass, like heavy solid glass beads, the frosted and the greyish blue ones. So, yeah, and now this is me having done a little bit more, I think. Am I? Yes, over here. And I was just scattered all over the place. So I did, it, it sort of started at that cuff, did a few more rows and then went up the back of the arm, which you can't see. And I'll turn it around and you'll be able to see it. And then I sort of came up to around here and I did this whole of this front. And it does not look great in this light, but if you go out during the day, it's not one to wear at night. I mean, why would you wear this at night anyway? It's not the kind of thing you would wear to wear opening night at a theatre or anything, but it, it's gorgeous out in full sunlight. It's absolutely beautiful. When the light comes through the, um, the frosted ones in particular, but also those greyish blue ones don't look at all grey. Well, they don't look anywhere near as grey. They look sort of more periwinkle, like the sort of blue in the jacket, like in the tweed. They look more like that when you're out in full sun. And the mermaid ones are just hilarious. They don't, yeah, they don't look like they go in this light. Next time I shoot it, I'll be sure to, I hadn't finished the whole of the front, but when it was, the light was really good. This is a good shot of it. And you can sort of see how they merge together 
But um, yeah, they're definitely. I definitely think if I wanted to make it look absolutely go gorgeous and aesthetically pleasing to more than just little kids, then I probably should have done the clear glass ones on, you know, all of them in that. But I don't know. I quite like it. And this is me um, saying that I also want to do, because it was a couple of episodes I did a, a, a video about all the September challenges. And one of them is luxurious fabrics or, you know, your special fabrics. And so these are the ones, some of the fabrics that I really, really want to make up. This one, I've got these big sequins and I'm going to bead it like with strings of beads and then at the bottom of the string is going to be a dangling a big sequin and it's just going to be amazing. This one I was going to use teal beads for this one like the leftovers grab a few of those and use them on this but I've decided I've got some white and transparent big disc sequins and I'm not going to ever use them on anything else and instead of trying to hide those ghost roses there's some white roses that I don't like as much as the pink ones I'm going to use them in that and this is getting back to you've got mail her favorite flowers are daisies and these ones are white and yellow which the colors of daisies it's also a french tweed and it's one of my luxurious fabrics so i definitely want to make that up and the name of <laughs> third reason why it's relevant this <laughs> this um month is that once this jacket has been made and beaded it's going to be tolstoy must die because it's about yeah Anyway, there's a whole saga behind the name of it and the beads that I'm going to use on it. But yes, yeah, since it's got a literary theme, I was like, yes, for this month, that will be perfect. So um, I was talking about. So yeah, I'm going to do, lo try to do loads of beading because I'm getting, as I said, I'm comering all my jackets and the jackets that I haven't beaded and my dresses and all my fabrics. And um, yeah, I've got some jackets out that aren't beaded yet that I want to bead so I'm going to go through them and pick the brightest ones and I guess those will be the ones that I bead oh and I thought maybe the ladybug there's eight ten yards of that there's a huge amount of that I'm going to make one or two jackets and the rest is going to be a dress and ladybird the Cinderella vintage ladybird book storybook is the one with the beautiful dresses in it that is another uh, another childhood storybook that yeah my love of fashion I think I can pinpoint it to reading that book like a thousand times anyway and I also have some very hungry caterpillar fabric so as well as making the sushi um, layer cake dress that's pinks and dark reds I will also make a brightly colored one and yes I have to finish beading this jacket I don't know should I like take all the beads off and just do clear glass beads or keep going with this multicolored one I don't know I kind of like it and there's such a weird combination of beads I don't think I'll be using those frosted glass beads in anything else or um yeah I don't know I'll leave it there for a few days and work on something else then decide oh and these are some of the uh jacket making fabrics so yeah that luxurious that challenge to make something with one of your luxurious fabrics this wasn't the most expensive fabric I have but if I put like hundreds of dollars worth of beads over the top of it then it would be pretty damn luxurious so yeah and this is that tweed that light blue linton tweed that I said I have enough to make two jackets out of so I could bead one so that it's silver and pale blue and then the other one there's these tiny colorful pom-poms in there I could like use all those colors well when I comrie all my jack making fabrics because they are just a mess at the moment I'll pick out some and beading to go with them oh and this is me reminding myself that if I wanted to do some beading I could just do the sequin work on this one which is going to look spectacular once I eventually do it I have finally got around to pulling apart this sample here. So it no longer exists except in bits of footage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I needed obviously the sequence to make the real thing. I just have to make it now.
Anyway, so loads of plans for this month and yeah, I'm really excited about them. And I'm actually really, I kind of really want to do the reading of the book. I know it's not sewing related, but you could listen to it while you're sewing. And yeah, I just love that book. Oh, and I'm going to finish the cactus jacket, the cactus flower jacket. And what's the third one? The butterflies. So I'm going to finish them all. Oh, and I'm going to take the beauty trim off this one, show you how that I how I do it. And then I'm going to, yeah, try two different types of beading and decide what beading to do. Yes, with I don't know how many hours I think there are left in this month. Quite a lot, obviously. Anywho, there will be jackets, there will be layer cake dresses, and there will be beading and mm, chocolate cake. Delicious. Maybe you'll um, look at the Very Hungry Caterpillar too and decide what foods I'd eat through if I was a Very Hungry, hungry Caterpillar. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, what books would you read if you had to do story time at a bookshop? And also what sewing challenges or what sewing projects are you doing this month? Thanks again for watching and happy sewing. Oh, and what's your favourite flower? I love poppies. That green fabric just down there, it's got poppies on it. It's completely adorable. I could make it, then wear it with my poppy dress. Okay, really going now. Bye. Oh, I didn't say happy sewing at the end. Happy sewing. <gasps> Ladybugs! Such a pretty fabric.